Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. This time I'm going to show you how to get through the Geokum Shrine, which is, I think, technically in Farron, but it's more or less southwest central Hyrule. This shrine is called Built for Rails, and this is probably the shrine that stumped me the longest. It took me about 35 minutes to figure out. So this first section, you want to just build a rectangle-shaped platform, stick it on the rails, try to center it, and try to make sure it's level, only because if you don't, this is going to happen, and it's going to fall off the rail, and you're going to plummet to your death. I actually game over it in this shrine, <laughs> if you could believe it. I could not figure this out for a super long time. All right, but once you have that more or less straight, you could just ride it down. The rail here is sloped. It may not really look like it, but it is. And then it's going to bring you over to the other side, and then it's time for the second challenge, which is where the shrine really, really starts. First things first, though, we're going to get the shrine's chest. And in order to do that, we're going to yoink this platform off the railing here, and then we are going to build a really long bridge to get us up to the chest. Now, you can do this in a couple different ways. You could build, like, you know, just a vertical platform and then angle some additional platforms up to get up there however this one's really just the easiest way it is a little unwieldy to move this thing around but trust me this is the easiest way to do it building the elevated platforms and stuff may not always work out and it could become off balance and you could fall so just build the bridge all right so there's the chest and now it's time to build ourselves uh sort of like a, a mine cart of sorts to go along these rails now, the shrine does give you a sort of rectangle platform that just spawns on the rail, and it's kind of indicative that maybe you should use it, but you really shouldn't. Um, I think it's actually showing you how to fail and not how to succeed with that hint, uh, which I don't necessarily think is the best idea, but it does work. So what you want to do is you want to build um, three parts of a square, and then you want to flip it over onto the rail. And the reason we're doing this is because this rail curves. And with a curved rail, you need some guardrails of your own on the sides. This way it doesn't flip over. If you were to do this with the rectangle that spawns on the track, uh, it will still slide off because it gets so side heavy. Um, I've even tried to build like triangle enclosures on the bottom and that doesn't work. It just ends up getting stuck on the track and doesn't actually succeed. Alternatively, you can shield surf on this particular railing, and because it's curved downward, you will get to the other side just fine. However, that's not exactly teaching you the right way to succeed, and uh, this part here, as far as I know, only has one solution. So what you wanna do is you want to take the long rectangle that's available to you, and then take the three square pieces and attach one on the side, one in the middle, and then one on the other side. And then we're gonna flip this over and put it on the inside tracks of this sort of minecart ride here. And then once we do that, we're gonna put the three fans that are available onto the back of it, because we need to get ourselves up the rail because this one is not curved downward. So like I said, grab it in the middle and then place it on the interior tracks just like this, and the reason for this is because uh, each track, so the right track and the left track, both break off, so we need to stay in the middle, and the only way to do that, at least as far as I'm aware, is to start in the middle, and you can only do that with a longer platform. So we're literally using all of the resources here to build ourselves uh, something good and something that'll work. So once you have everything set up, you don't have to worry about it being super straight. That's okay. Uh, because it's staying on the interior tracks, it'll balance itself out. But if you do get a little worried that it's sliding to one side, just stand on the other side and it should take care of itself. All right, so as long as you've made it this far, you should be okay. Like I said, try to keep it balanced if you notice it's swaying to one side or the other. But it really should just stay on this interior track because of that square you have going down the middle. That's really what's keeping it in place. And as long as you can get around this curve, even if you were to jump at the apex of this curve, you would very likely make it uh, via paragliding. So you're pretty much safe from there on. But that's it, that's the shrine. So far in the game out of the, let's see, 67 shrines that I've done, 
This one has taken me the absolute longest. I'm not great at building things and I'm not great at like physics based puzzles most of the time. So this really took me a while, but I hope this has helped you. All right, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The links for those are in the description below. As always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.